Today we're going drawing in the park. I figured it would be a great idea because most people have beautiful statues in their park where they live and it's a nice day so we can head out with our sketch pad. Okay, so here we are sitting in the park. We're gonna start with the human figure. So again, like the previous video, there's about eight head units in the full body. So whatever the size of the head is, there's about eight times the size of the head from the top of the head to the feet. Okay, so now we have this person t uh, taming the horse. So I never really did a horse before. So now to get the proportions right, I look at the negative space between the arm of the horse's head and his arm and the horse's leg. Now we, I erased a little bit. Uh, so now I got the light sketch down. So now I switched, erased most of the lines and switched to the charcoal pencil. Um, instead of the fine line of the number two pencil. So now the charcoal, I already kind of sort of have it figured out, but you never know. So again, we're going to look at the relationship between the man and the horse. So uh, hopefully I could do the horse okay, because I've never done a horse before, but since this is a statue, I don't think it should be too hard. Okay, so again, the negative space is that area between the horse's leg and uh, his arm. So you have to look back and forth. Okay, how big is, is the his arms compared to the horse's arms? How high is the head? Is it, you know, you have to keep going and checking yourself to get the right proportion so that it lines up by the time you get to the bottom of the horse that it lines up with the top. Of course you can erase and move things around, you know, so that's the whole point. No problem with moving if it's not in the right spot or if it happens to work with you. Sometimes it doesn't come out perfectly like what you're looking at, but the proportions look okay to you. The horse. I don't know, looks a, a little small. I don't know where the muscles are on a horse or anything. And uh, But I don't have a photo of it, just a statue. Okay, so now we're going to get a little more uh, into the detail with a line, like a broken line around the edge of everything. So we're just still trying to figure out proportions and making sure everything is in the right spot and going into, as soon as it's in the right spot, then you could go more and more detail. But I don't like to get too detailed until I know everything's there. See, now we have to erase and move it around. If I could get this horse right. Okay, now it's the rearing horse. He's trying to mount the horse, I guess, jump on it and uh, right away. So here we are with the charcoals. The nice thing about the blendable charcoals is you could blend them. <laughs> and okay, so now we smeared it a little bit. I went around with a paper towel, smearing some of the charcoal. Now I have a number two pencil, a more a lighter, but more uh, accurate, where I could really get in there up close. And here we go with, okay, the hand, and then on the, uh, whatever that is, leather rope around his head. And so you can use different types of pencils, like more pencils that are more accurate and then other pencils that are more blendable so i like to use a combination of both charcoal and graphite and usually if you keep it clean and you don't erase too much you know the surface you could damage the surface if you you know gouge it or anything so if you erase too hard or damage the surface then it's noticeable in the shadows. I can't really see the back leg. I'll have to go around and look at it later. Okay, so we're gonna shadow in. Now, let's get some separation between the horse and the man. So if we make the horse a little darker, then, uh, then he, he will stand out. We'll make him white, 
the horse dark and then the background light so that we have some contrast. So, okay, now I have the number two pencil again. And I had to make the arm a little short. It looks too long. I think I'm going to change it, make it a little shorter. But we're going over everything. Okay, now I'm back at the studio. Okay, we're going to do a, a one-point one perspective. See that one dot in the middle? All these lines are going to point to that one dot, that one cross in the middle of the bottom of the horse. So we're going to have all these lines. One That's the drawing that I did in, uh, in advance. Okay, so now we're going to follow these lines. I'm going to put three columns up on the left. And that th there would be like sort of a pedestal at the bottom of the column and the tops should all line up. Okay, so you follow the lines on the inside part of it and then the outside you could just go horizontal, make it squared off. So follow the lines on the inside and then you have an edge and just do it follow the horizon you could put two point perspective and really figure these columns out but it's not that detailed okay so we'll put one column in now the second column will just make it a little bit lighter we have to follow the same line see the same line from the pedestal the same line from the bottom the capital at the top is on the same line and we're following these this vanishing point in where they could go. Now I hid the vanishing point behind him. All right, so we want to make sure that they blend in as they get further away. We want it to blend in the background um, more. So we're gonna make the one closest to our eye more contrasty, more black and white. I'll do that later. Now, okay, we'll clean up, get rid of all the, uh, or we'll do some erasing. Now on this side, you know, we'll just make another architectural, uh, we'll make a monolithic, one of those uh, Romanesque, it's very Greek revival or Roman, you know, just some, just trying to do something that looks classical. Okay, again, we're going to line the bottom up with the horizon, and then on the left, the inside, we're going to we're going to follow these lines. So it's going to be flat, and straight towards us, and then it's going to tilt. Okay, so here it is, the top of the thing. All right, we're not doing any shadows yet. Let's get rid of some of these lines I don't need. Okay, now this is now we'll get to the charcoal. So the charcoal, erase before you go to the charcoal because it's just an outline. Okay, now the charcoal is the fun part because you could be loose with it, you could uh, be sketchy, and then you blend it later. Okay, so they got the capital on the top. We're gonna have a little shadowing. Maybe we'll have the shadow on that side. I, you should really decide where the light source is coming from, but I'm not gonna go crazy with that. We're gonna have it come from the right side. Okay, so we got the three columns. Now, you want them to be giving the, the whole point of put, putting three is to give you the illusion of depth. Okay, let's do the other side now because I like to work the whole page together usually. You know, sometimes it's better to have the background on first, but okay, so now let's lighten it up again because I didn't like it. It was too heavy, it's too sloppy. Okay, let's clean it up, but still with the charcoal. So you could be kinda free. Okay, let's put in some of the soft pastel. Because this is all background, even though they're the columns and everything, it's all part of the background. The, the focal point is right there in the front, the horse and the man taming the horse. Okay, so these are soft pastels, so they're the consistency of chalk. And I like these because I could do a quick drawing. I could get the whole idea done, color, everything, very quickly. And you could too. And like I said in previous videos, if if it's too powdery for you, if it's too you know, if you're worried that it's going to come off, then you could spray it with a fixative. 
Okay, let's add some color in here. Now, what horse is mostly that they're brown, so we want to get it darker. So we might as well add some brown, and we'll add some brown into, into the man also, and into the background. Let's put some brown uh, sepia tone, and here's some green. Instead of having to bother uh, doing trees, which I'm not really crazy about doing trees. I don't know, I find them a little bit boring. I rather do architectural things. So I just give a hint of some greenery and move on. Okay, now we're gonna put two color blues in the sky. We had like a lighter blue in the middle and now I just put a darker blue into the top. And now I'm erasing a little bit to take down where I think I put too much color in. So the colors are going to be very subtle. There's not going to be anything crazy. Okay, now these pencils, I have all numbered pencils. So now this is a, uh, I don't know what number it is. Number two. Okay, see it right on the top? Number two pencil. And number two pencil is light and accurate, and it could be erased. That's why it's nice to have number two. It takes you a little longer to get through everything, but you start off light and you do layering on top of layering and with the number two pencil. And here's the kneaded eraser that goes into any shape you want. The eraser, the eraser any shape. My last video has, I showed you the unwrapping of the art supplies that we're using today. Okay, so we're gonna add also a little golden yellow. I think the colors are gonna be uh, yellow and then might as well do green blue, yellow green blue, and not go too colorful with anything. Okay, we'll give it a little golden yellow. Erase it, wipe it off. I use a brush, a regular brush to get rid of any um, erasing. Okay, so now we're going to go with darker pencil. I think we cut, what is this? Oh, a seven. Okay, so, so see the difference now in the number seven, how much blacker it is? So you could just do the, the shadow separately with different pen, pencils. With different pencils, it goes quicker. Okay, so this is the darkest pencil. We do the nostrils, the eye, but we could do like the, the leather and the rings and get a little more into the shadowing. Get into the shadow. And there's his arm. I fixed it. This, you know, it's a little bit the back. I could work on a little bit more his back. Okay, so now the legs. I mean, they look okay. I'm not sure. Okay, the hoofs at the bottom and shadowing in the tail, perfect. It's okay. And then you do the ankle and it'll give him a little shadow underneath him. So he has, he's on a shadow. Okay, then it's the three ribs and that, uh, the backbone. Okay, now this is a blending stick which I just bought. Usually I don't use blending sticks, I just use my finger. But now the blending stick is much better because you could really get in there tight. It's like a wound up piece of paper. And you could get in close, because this is a very small drawing, just like on my pad. So uh, the blending stick, okay, now we're back to the number two. So when you want to uh, be careful, you use like a number two. Okay, let's get one of our, my uh, br uh, brown charcoals and, and add a little more brown. I guess I added a little too much brown on him. <laughs> but um, we got the horse, looks good. You know, the shadowing, the black. Okay, we put a little white on top. You know, you could put the white chalk. I, I, you know, that really makes it look good. Okay, here's the colored pencils. So I got a green pencil. Now, this is different from the soft pastels that I was using before. This is a pencil, so it's more uh, now like a line. And now I could erase certain things. Like I put too much on, on the guy. 
Okay, let's erase it. Okay, now you might as well use a little yellow pencil, scribbling around, you know, don't waste any time. Blue, now a little blue. You know, there's always, if there's blue in the sky, there's also going to be blue on the, some of these columns, so everything is going to be a little bit blue. If there's blue, if there's brown, everything could go a little brown. All right, so the darker blue on the top, blending it in just with my finger. And I don't like those lines, so we'll get the white out. Okay, so the white now, it's like white. Some white I have is like chalky, and other ones, I don't know, it's a little uh, firmer, but <clears throat> sometimes it doesn't work. The white, you can't count on white, white pencil. I mean, you can use other, you can mix ink. I can use Indian ink if I want to get really dark. I've got, um, I'm just using these pencils because to, to me, it, it's easier to do. People could, you know, for a couple of dollars, you go to the store, you buy these pencils, and that's all you have. Everyone has pencils and paper at home, and you just draw whatever's, you look at whatever's in front of you. You know, I go to sketch class where at the Art Students League where we have the live models. So I got used to, you know, looking at the models and, you know, you're stuck with whatever pose they want to do or whatever angle you happen to get. You can't pose them. Uh, okay, so I think that's about uh, good enough. I mean, how much more can we do? I could add a little bit more in the sky. So I think that's good for today. I didn't want today's video to be too long. So don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much. My name's Paul Petronella, and here we are drawing in the park, uh, Taming the Horse tutorial. Thank you.